day. And you know, of course, South Africa, uh, we have seen during the past uh, few years of state capture and corruption, South Africa has lost 1.5 trillion rand through this corruption in the years between 2014 and 2019. Now, this was done in a study conducted by United for Mzanzi, and the name was titled State Capture 101. Now, United for Mzanzi is an initiative led by the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants and Business Leaders commissioned in the Stellenbosch University Center for Complex Systems in Transition to analyze in much more depth how deep corruption is in South Africa. Now, of course, earlier on, I had a conversation with Freeman Nomvalo. He's the CEO of SICA and the Unite for Mzanzi. Here's my discussion with him. Now, in that conversation, he highlighted... He highlighted, of course, so many aspects with regards to that. Take a listen. Now, joining me to have this discussion with regards to Unite for Mzanzi and, of course, the work they are doing and the report that came out last week uh, with regards to corruption and how it has cost South Africa. I'd like to welcome the CEO of SICA and Unite for Mzanzi, Mr. Freeman Nomvalo. Freeman, good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon, Faraj, and good afternoon to our listeners. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Now, it's an absolute pleasure. I think, Freeman, let, let's start off, of course, with Unite for Mzanzi. Of course, it's yourself with a number of academics, and the, and the clear aim is to go ahead and sort of bring the accountability for what has happened with regards to corruption and state capture over the past decade. Yes, Unite for Mzanzi is an initiative that uh, SICA has initiated with the Wiseman Kutu Foundation uh, Trust. Um, and the idea with this is that there has been numerous reports for a number of years now about corruption, state capture, and the role of different players in, the, in that corruption. And uh, as uh, people in the profession, uh, the accounting and auditing profession, we end up finding that we are asked too many questions about our role in these instances. And we think that that may narrow the discussion a little bit too much. It is important that we have open discussion on this issue, frank discussion, but also we recognize that there are more players than just auditors and accountants in this, in this space. And it is important that we involve all those stakeholders in the search for solutions in this regard. Yeah, I mean, you're speaking about, obviously, the auditing. And, of course, auditing becomes part of seeing how the finances flow within our country and organizations within it. And, of course, you know, being part of SICA, you see it firsthand how the country has bled for so long during those years of state capture and corruption and how it has reeled such a bad effect right here in this country. Indeed, indeed. When you look at the numbers that uh, have been quoted, they are staggering. And when you look at the impact of the pandemic at the moment, uh, we've just had a, a, an increase in the restrictions to level four uh, in the country. And it's going to leave a lot of people, especially the poorest of the poor, without any forms of survival, without any forms of uh, uh, maintaining normal living. It affects those people the most. And when there are no resources available for government to support uh, those parts of the communities, it is a difficult situation indeed. And any money uh, taken from corruption, not only does it rob society of um, resources for, for, for services, it also robs society of the ability of government to step in um, and support its society under these current and difficult times. Freeman, let's talk about the case study. Of course, it's titled State Capture 101. And this was, of course, a case study that was done between the years of 2014 to 2019. The number is 1.5 yes. trillion rand. That is huge, yes. isn't it? Yes. Yes, the, the, the number is 1.5 trillion, but this number has been reported quite widely uh, in the media as well. But the work that we've done, we did not just limit ourselves to uh, 2014. First and foremost, we recognize that uh, state capture is more than just corruption. It is robbing society um, of resources that are available to society to, uh, to survive. 
And also we recognize that state capture is not a new phenomenon. Mm. In one of the case studies that we are dealing with uh, in, this, in this effort, we are going back to the 1800s um, in the old uh, regime in South Africa, looking at how the interface between government and private sector has been less than, has been less than uh, transparent and, and, and leaving a lot of resources improperly in the hands of, the, of, 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 of individuals. And we're saying this is an old phenomenon. We should not fool ourselves and think that the state capture started in 2014. It started a long time ago. And we've got to understand that and understand the issue, the forces that drive it so that we are able to respond from a policy perspective, to respond from um, uh, legislation that needs to be put in place in order to combat this. It's interesting that you bring up the, the 1800s, Freeman. And of course, we've seen during the years of colonialism and apartheid, especially when it came to two precious metals, diamonds and gold. That was the start, wasn't it, where you had these conglomerates, uh, for example, the De Beers uh, diamond, diamond industry that came in and, of course, took control of the diamonds in the parts of Kimberley. And, of course, we saw that rippling out into the gold mines in the areas of Johannesburg. What we are saying in relation to these issues is that you need to go back that, you need to go that far back and see what has been happening and see what relationships have been built which are not proper relationships between government and the state and then address those issues even as they happen today. Um, we, we, we also look at this book uh, by, uh, uh, um, about uh, guns and money, apartheid guns and money. Uh, that book uh, uh, spells out numerous instances where government and business have had relationships that were not uh, uh, kosher, that are the kind of relationships uh, that were clouded in secrecy and so on. And those relationships left certain individuals benefiting and left society uh, wanting. Uh, and we're saying we need to understand this phenomenon as an old phenomenon. We need to understand this phenomenon as a phenomenon that robs society. And we need to then, with that perspective, respond on how we deal with this matter. Focusing on a few individuals and thinking that this is just an, a phenomenon that has come with those individuals would not help us understand it properly and would not help us think about the solutions that we need to put in place to deal with. Freeman, how much did uh, Professor Tuli Madonsela, of course, when she was the then public protector, her report into, of course, state capture help in this uh, case study and, of course, getting that vital information to go ahead and publish it? We have to remember that had it not been because of media in the first place, probably there would not have been investigation by the public protector. So what we are about in the Unite from Zanzi is to think about all of those stakeholders, the public protector, the organized business, organized labor, and, uh, and the civil society at large, and see how we can mobilize these people to converse around these issues so that they can find solutions. So if you have active media, if you have active civil society, you will have these issues being brought to, to light. And of course, as they say, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Uh, we need transparency so that these issues are dealt with. That report by the public protector went a long way in, in, in let, helping us understand the mechanics and how these issues have operated and and and, that, and hence it's been a very important it's been a very important report and we need more work being done in this era so that we can unmask more. Um, as we speak, we are talking about the pandemic, and during the pandemic already there's hundreds of millions of friends that seem to have been misappropriated in relation to the support government has been providing in relation to uh, the equipment that had to be bought in order to help those in the front line to assist us fight this pandemic. Even under these current circumstances, you find that people are, are finding opportunities uh, to steal. I'm going to get to that now with regards to the present and, and the future, Freeman. Uh, of the years, of course, you did say it's not just limited to 2014. Of course, there was a lot of research done before then. We, of course, saw the, the Gupta family uh, during those years, of course, being very instrumental mm -hmm. Uh, working with the then uh, former president Jacob Zuma, and of course doing the, the acquiring, of course, of tenders, uh, 
resources of the company and of course just the illegality with regards to that so how much of work did the entire team of united unite for mzanzi had to go through to shift through all of that we see the corruption in escom we see the corruption in transnet just all of that work be it corporate and of course you know your state-owned enterprises coming together and and getting all of that information to have the amount of how much south africa had lost courtesy of state capture it's, there's been a lot of work done in this regard. Um, as, as you point out, we focus on the public sector. We focus on the private sector. They will have, they will have case studies that are talking about private sector incidences of uh, malpractice. We're focusing on, on state entities. We focus on some of the things that are happening directly in government. And that work um, has been done by a team uh, from the University of Stellenbosch, uh, which is helping us pull all these things together, enable us to understand and put together material that can be used to help people gain knowledge of how these mechanics operate so that we can think about ways in which we can combat it going forward. Freeman, I'm going to come to the point earlier on that you said, of course, focusing on the present and what could potentially happen in the future. I know this isn't the first uh, case study and this won't be the last case study that Unite for Mzansi does. We see what's happening with regards to uh, the COVID-19 and how the funds, of course, have been misappropriated. How important is the next case study in dealing with that? People are dying. The fourth wave is, is really uh, causing ravage across our entire country. And the poorest of the poor are the ones that are bearing the brunt. So the next case study, the next work that Unite from Zanzi is going to be doing, how important is that in holding whoever's responsible for misappropriating those funds accountable? It's absolutely critical because, amongst other things, while we need to make sure that we don't, we, we, mini, we minimize the loss of life, we, nim, we minimize the impact, the negative impact that uh, uh, the pandemic has on society generally, we also need to make sure that um, government uh, resources are directed to those productive elements in society so that we can regenerate and rejuvenate the economy. So it is absolutely critical not just for survival. It's absolutely essential that we survive, but it's also essential that we spare the resources so that we've got these resources in order to make the necessary investments for the economy to grow post the pandemic. It is absolutely a critical issue that we're going to be dealing with uh, next. Freeman, uh, what needs to happen next when, of course, you have this report, whoever's been, of course, uh, f I won't say found guilty because it's up to the courts to find those that are guilty, but what would you say is Unite for Mzanzi's, you know, message to law enforcement authorities for those who have not just bled the country, but have really caused so much of harm to families who are supposed to be benefiting from these funds? Uh, the, the important message to law enforcement society is, is, is this, that our ability to prosecute successfully relies on our ability to have convincing information, information that can stand the test of time in a court of law in relation to whatever misdemeanor that you're dealing with. There are professionals in this country that can help in, the, in this area. We are saying, we're also making a call to those professionals to say to them, you are here, this is your country. You can't stand on the sidelines and blame government for things that are going wrong. Stand up, be counted, make your contribution, so that where we need to lend a hand to the law enforcement agency, we do lend a hand to the enforcement agents. So the enforcement agency is saying, we have the professionals in the country that can help you to deal with these issues and understand some of the things that you may not be privy to because of uh, their technical in character. So we want to mobilize the different professionals in different areas, uh, fields of study, so that those professionals can be available to assist government in this fight. Because in order for government to prosecute successfully, some of these things are complex and they require that uh, expert knowledge. And we want to pledge that to the extent that we have the knowledge, we stand ready to support, but also we want to invite others to be ready to provide that support to government as well. Freeman Nomvalo, the CEO of Saika and United Forms Zanzi, who say thank you so much for making the time for us and please do go ahead and continue your good work. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, it's an absolute pleasure.
brief interview there with, uh, with Freeman Nongvalo, just giving us an outline of the work that they are doing for Unite for Mzanzi and, of course, the importance of, you know, releasing statistics on corruption. But the buck now has to stop with law enforcement. They need to take the next level of prosecuting and, before that, arresting those responsible for bleeding the country dry. Coming up after the break, we are going to give you the viewers of I.